Hi, I'm Aris and this is Yesterday Studios. I like to talk about all things history here and today we will be focusing on bows. We have seen a resurgence of bow use and this is thanks to social media, fashion, and nostalgia. Before we get into the why this even occurred in the first place, we have to go back to the beginning to see the evolution of the hair bow. You may not know this, but bows have been around since the development of ancient civilizations. The Greeks, Egyptians, Aztecs, and Sumerians were known to wear things in their hair. However, wearing hair ribbons was for practical reasons to keep hair out of their face. However, bows would become cemented as go-to hair accessories in the Middle Ages. According to Sarah Collins, a professor of fashion at Savannah College of Art and Designs, with the creation of the horizontal loom, ribbon was able to be introduced to the world. With this creation in the 16th and 17th centuries, bows would be worn by people of all genders. This was so popular that it created a specific type of hairstyle called the love lock. A love lock was when you grew out a piece of your hair longer than the rest and tied it with the bow at the end. Thus, the bow would become a symbol of romance because it was close to the heart. Adding on, men would also use hair bows in their wigs as a way to decorate them and to tie their hair up throughout the 16th and 18th century. As we know, all kinds of people would wear bows from the Middle Ages until the 19th century when gender norms would start to be curated. According to Esther Berry, a gender studies scholar, where it had once served as an object to distinguish class, it became an object to distinguish gender. Bows would become associated as feminine because fashion magazines began to construct gender norms when it came to clothing and hairstyling. Anyone that followed what these magazines said to a T would realize that bows should only be used by girls. It's important to note that boys and men stopped growing their hair longs and even wearing long wigs, so it was not necessary to wear bows anymore. But this is where we can see division with this hair accessory occurs. Now that we had a run through of the history of bows, let's talk about them in our present day. They are so much more dainty and so much more versatile. Bows have been adopted with aesthetic cores like coquette core, ballerina core. Although I'm not a believer in aligning yourself to a specific core and having to categorize everything to a specific core, but for people that do align themselves to these aesthetics, bows are components to how to dress up the, for the part. The use of bows represent femininity, individuality, personality, and daintiness. However, by showcasing how, vers how versatile bows can be, I think this is why they have come back in a big way that's lasted for a while now. You simply tie a ribbon around anything really. Your hair is a sure bet, but be creative and try to neck, wrist, ankle, or purse. All in all, the bow trend is about taking scraps of girlhood and repurposing them into little assertions of self-empowerment. Besides aesthetic cores, high fashion brands have adopted bows as components of their branding. Sandy Liang and Simone Rocha are two fashion brands that really embody the femininity, daintiness, and versatility. Here are just a few looks from both brands showing just this. this fun video off by highlighting bows and in interior design which I'll just add in a speedrun fashion and list who the designer is. So that's it for me. I hope you learned something new about the history of bows and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next week with a new one. Bye.